Kate McCann and Adam Bolton on Times Radio. Well, Fee and Jane in the afternoon, of course, worth listening out for on weekday afternoons. Uh, coming up next, Alexis, uh, worth listening to as well as Aika Hazrika, who'll be following him. But uh, stay with us at half past. Uh, we're going to hear from the Tory MP Crispin Blunt. He's going to be talking drugs policy and from Heidi Alexander uh, confessing to Kate. <laughs> but for now, let's look at politics elsewhere in the world and go to Iran, where three weeks of protests show no sign of winding down. They come in response to the death of 22-year-old Masha Amini, who was detained by morality police in Tehran for breaking the law there, which requires women to cover their hair with a hijab. She initially fell into a coma and then died three days later. For more, we can speak now to the Iranian writer and activist uh, Mariam Namazi. Thank you very much indeed uh, for being with us. Thank you for having me. Do you feel, as some are saying, that this is really the moment where revolution has arrived in Iran? I think definitely if you look at the protests this time round, uh, it is very different. I mean, there have been many protests throughout the 40 years that the Iranian regime has held power. Um, but I think it's really reached a tipping point now. And if you look at the protests, the fact that they've continued, the fact that women are taking the lead, the fact that uh, the, the slogans are so clearly against an Islamic state, against a state of misogyny, and also, you know, the main slogan, which is woman, life, freedom. It's such a universal, such a secular, such a modern slogan. And I think it represents all that which uh, Iranian women and men have been yearning for, for for a very long time. And we're seeing it actually unfold before our very eyes. I do think uh, very much so that it's a woman's revolution. And we have been speaking for many years now about the fact that it is going to be a woman's revolution that will bring this regime to an end. And I think that's what we're witnessing today. What's wonderful too is that men are alongside women, shouting women life freedom. It gives a completely different image of Iran. You know, what we've uh, become familiar with is an Islamic regime in Iran uh, with its laws that, um, you know, consider women half uh, of a man's, a woman's testimony worth half of a man's, that imposes uh, sex apartheid in the same way that, you know, the government of South Africa used to impose racial apartheid, uh, where it actually promotes violence against women in its very laws, including, for example, stoning of women. Um, for adultery and so on and so forth. I think uh, your your listeners will, will know about that history. And here is another face of Iran, a young generation that's had enough and that is refusing to back down. I think that courage is so inspiring and it has inspired people across the globe. If you look at um, protests in support of the women and men in Iran, across the globe. It's been the largest protests we've ever seen throughout these past 40 years. And it's inspired everyone from actors to singers uh, to government officials to take action and to make a stand in defense of the women and people there. So I think, of course, very tragic in the sense that, you know, you've got how Massa Amini was killed. So many other young people are being killed on the streets, but also at the same time, so inspiring to see the potential and possibility of change that I think will affect not just, you know, people in Iran, but across the region and also the world. As you say, there have been people who've been killed uh, as a result of these protests. I mean, just how dangerous is it and how concerted is the attempt to repress the uprising coming from the authorities? I mean, it's, it's hugely dangerous. Um, if you look at, for example, just what happened to Mahsa Amini, she had her hijab on, she had the uh, government uh, compulsory veiling on. Uh, she was killed because a few strands of her hair were showing, you know, so it's extremely dangerous for women to go out, remove their hijabs, to burn their hijabs, to go out unveiled, uh, to try to normalize um, women with their hair showing. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, with many men by their side, and it's hugely dangerous. The regime is using uh, military level uh, machinery and guns against protesters. Mm -hmm. So just yesterday, a young man, Darush Alizadeh, he was in his car um, in Sanandaj in Iranian Kurdistan, and he just honked his car 
in support of the protesters. And one of the uh, security officials came up and executed him pl- point blank in his car. Mm. You know, you've got another young uh, woman, Nika Shakarami, which I'm sure a lot of people have now heard her name too. She was 16. The last uh, her family heard from her is she had attended a protest. She had burned her hijab. And the last phone call she had from them that she gave, she called is to say, uh, they're, they're, I'm running away. They're chasing me. Her body was found 10 days later. Her skull was fractured. Her nose was fractured. And, uh, you know, they uh, have taken the family on TV to confess and to say that they're against the protests, even though the family is still standing firm despite all these um, pressures. So they're putting so much pressure on families. They stole her body so that the family couldn't bury her. They're putting pressure on families not to... Uh, bury their children publicly, not to say anything. And nonetheless, you've got these young people still going out in the streets. There were mass protests yesterday, including universities, including school children, um, you know, coming out without their hijabs. And their slogans are about, you know, the fact that they want a normal life. They don't want an Islamic state. They don't want a state that's based on misogyny. Mariam Namadzi, thank you very much indeed. What fascinating insight into what's happening in Iran. Well, I said earlier that it was Alexis who was in.